Hey there, greetings from the team at the Edward M. Kennedy Institute for the United States Senate in Boston, and welcome to the very first edition of Experiencing Exhibits Frequently Asked Questions. My name's Mitch, and I'm an interpreter at the Kennedy Institute in Boston, right here, and I am super excited to get to do this video series answering questions about the Senate and talking about the United States Senate. Normally, I work in a place like this, actually just like this, exactly like this, a full-scale recreation of the United States Senate chamber. It's pretty cool. It's pretty spectacular. If I don't say so myself, I think it's quite awesome. But today, I'm here at home, as are my fellow team members at the Kennedy Institute during this challenging and unprecedented time. One of the most important elements of a visit to the Kennedy Institute is engagement, whether that be with our public programs, daily chamber activities, experiencing our exhibits, or engaging with one of our many civic education opportunities. We want to ensure that during this challenging time, we continue to engage with our community. And that means reaching out to answer your questions about the United States Senate and the important role that it plays in our government. So let's get started with our first question. It's so hard to know where to begin as we have so many great questions each and every day at the Kennedy Institute. But this question is as good as any to get started with, and that is, what is the Great Compromise? Well, the quick answer is that it was the decision that was reached in the summer of 1787 that resulted in the establishment of a bicameral or two-chamber legislature. This would mean that we would have a United States House of Representatives and a United States Senate. How did this decision go down? Well, the delegates in Philadelphia in 1787 had a dilemma. They had a debacle. Did they have a debate? You better believe they had a debate. Representatives or delegates from small states with small populations like New Jersey called for a system based off of equal representation. Each state would have equal representation in the federal legislature. But larger states with larger populations like Virginia pointed out that states have different populations and states with larger populations should have a higher percentage of representation. So they debated and they debated. And finally, Roger Sherman and Oliver Ellsworth came up with what is called the Connecticut Compromise. Today, we call it the Great Compromise, a solution by which the House of Representatives would have its representation be based on the population of the states. The greater the population, the higher the percentage of representation. And at the same time, have a separate body, the United States Senate, based on equal representation of the states, a place where every state could elect two United States senators. One of my favorite moments at the Kennedy Institute is asking students if they have ever heard the word compromise before. One time a student piped up to say, yeah, it's a decision that everyone is unhappy with. And that student is right, as a compromise decision is an agreement that truly does take into account everyone. And no single person is 100% happy with the outcome because everyone involved had to make some sort of concession. Sort of like when President Ronald Reagan used to say, the person who agrees with you 80% of the time is a friend and an ally, not a 20% traitor. Or it's like when Senator Ted Kennedy used to say, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Both Senator Kennedy and President Reagan are saying the same thing. They're talking about perhaps the most difficult necessity in politics and government, and perhaps in our everyday lives, compromise. It's the difficult balance between give and take that results in the possible. And with that, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you'll watch more videos. I'm excited about doing more videos and answering more questions. So until next time, this session is adjourned.